Greetings everyone, my name is Etterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Maho Warrior. During the last part, I defeated Akonida and Dodeca. So with all 8 of the Magical Mistresses defeated, I've unlocked the Essor Fortress stages. So it's time to go after the evil sorceress Essor and put a stop to her plans of conquering or assaulting this peaceful land of Eternia. So of course these are the fortress stages, so we'll see we'll be seeing enemies throughout the previous eight magical mystery stages, not to mention all sorts of gimmicks. Like over here we already have the penguin enemies from the ice stage, from the now these uh, paper planes from the fire stage, um, whatever these enemies were from. And we have these carrots from the air stage, and these are from the water stage. Just from the intro segment alone, we already had about six uh, gimmicks from different sta six different stages, or six enemies. This reminds me somewhat of Fireman from uh, Mega Man 1, or specifically Me Mega Man 1's Wally 1 Fortress, that part. So yeah, I think the difficulty will be increasing quite a bit, hope depending on how the configuration of challenges go by. Like here for example, I have to be a bit more careful with my jumping. I just hope that the uh, water segment isn't too bad. I fear how dangerous it can be, especially especially considering how tame the toxic sewers were. And I kind of made a mistake uh, in the previous part. The marine base was the first water stage and the toxic sewer was the second one. Although... The marine base was more of the traditional one, the toxic sewer had a lot more spikes. Then again, that's more due to the fact that, well, it was uh, the second stage in the group. Or was, the toxic sewer was in the third set, whereas the whereas the marine base was in the first set of magical mistresses, so of course that would be easier. I'm gonna hold off from using the times two multipliers, but I think I should start using them. In fact, I think I'll start using the times two multiplier in the next stage, but it'll lo I'll lose it once I actually run out of if I die in the process. But I might as well use it. I have enough gems in order to do it, and I want to save up my all my extra gems or money in case of something else goes wrong. After all, I have enough to buy more E tanks if necessary. If there's one thing I didn't mention in the previous parts is that I don't know what this empty space in the bottom section is supposed to be for. I, I know, at first I thought it would be for special weapons, but apparently not. So I don't know what that's supposed to be for. Well, that's a little bit of a close one, but there's enough leeway there. So yeah, maybe that'll be for a future update, that empty space. Otherwise, the menu should be... I would expect the menu to just be a lot... Tenor. I just wonder, is this a tower or is this a castle? Well, from the map, it looks more like a tower. Oh boy, we have this segment now. We have to bounce around these clouds, and the wind is blowing me all over the place. This is going to be a slight problem. I need to wait for the wind to start blowing in the right direction and then continue on. So I can actually make the jump. Oh boy, that was bad. Let's try this again when the air wind switches its direct show. I didn't realize it'll actually reset too. Alright, made it this time. Yeah, I'm a lot more hesitant to do these jumps, especially with the clouds moving in different... especially the wind shifting its own direction at times. As early as... if I fail, the punishment is de instant death. Just like that. Yeah, an escalation of the earlier challenges with the cloud jumping and the wind. These clouds were in the forest state... and the cl these clouds were back in the sky fortress, whereas the wind was part of the deep forest stage. It's fitting that they, I was expecting that they would eventually mix this. At least there's a checkpoint right at the uh, right over there in case I die. I was a little bit uh, hasty when doing doing that jump.
Well, they made it. Oh, hey, I have three, 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 three gems. And there's a checkpoint right over here, thank goodness. If this was another Mega Man fan game, I would expect they would have to go to another segment in order to... before I reach the checkpoint. But the Skipper 1995 is really generous at checkpoints, which I do appreciate. And we have infinite lives anyway, so... not too bad. So that isn't too bad in, in first place. But still, it means that I have minimal backtracking I have to do and I have to repeat seconds less. And the Fortress stage team is pretty good too as well. It's fitting because it really adds a sense of urgency while still being energetic and whatnot. And there's a good reuse of all the gimmicks and mixing them in different configurations. Like you already saw about how tough the earlier configuration of those the clouds plus the wind gimmick can be. And now we have the tridents uh, from the marine base plus these wind gusts from the uh, water stage. I mean the tridents from the water stage. Not to mention we have the spike drops here. Thankfully the winds are strong enough to keep pushing, propelling me upwards. I could have just did a damage boost over there and I would be fine. Oh, and now we have the sewer too. Well, it's a short one, but I suppose it's going to... Okay, that was a short sewer segment. Well, it seems that for this first stage, we're going all out with all, st all the gimmicks that we've been showing off. I've seen gimmicks and enemies from all eight of the previous stages. Eight of the Magical Mistress stages, that is. I remember this one from Dodeca, after all. So we're gonna have the gravity switches here. These are from, um, what's her name? This is from the fire stage. I, I wanted to rush that, just in case I wouldn't die. And we have the sumo, of course, from the fire stage. Once again, he falls in the bottom of, in the instant death spikes. Thankfully, it seems that the, the bouncing projectiles will always harm enemies if they get come into contact with them. Oh, now we have the switch changing color block gimmick from the power plant stage. I'm going to have to memorize what's going on, on the right side though, so I better turn this back on. Oh, just like the power plant stage as well, because I had to memorize what the drop was. Or was that the fire stage? Well, one of the stages where you have to memorize the drop. Thankfully I turned it on so I don't need to worry too much. And I hit the switch too many times. I should have just shot it twice. Oh well, the checkpoint is right over there. Well, it makes sense considering how tight... This is basically a tighter version of an earlier challenge we had. So we have a lot more room, room for error in this case. But the checkpoints are rather generous, so other than losing a lot of gems, we don't really have too much to worry about. There we go. Oh, I remember these. There we go. Of course I could just damage boost off of it, which may not be a bad idea after all. Oops. Ugh, I got the scrolled off screen. I thought it was going to maintain itself, but this falls to Mega Man and other platformer conventions where if it goes off screen, it dissipates or disappears. Alright, we're almost back to where we were. There we go, that's what I wanted to do. 
I just need to make sure to keep it on screen for enough time. Of course, I probably if I had just let those enemies damage boost me, I could have made it. And we're at the boss gate, or boss door. Um... Okay then. I don't know what these are supposed to be based off of, but alright. Um... How do I harm them? Oh, okay, so I need to... So I need to launch the spike right, right into their mouths. Fitting, oh, that's interesting. So I need to keep this open, and... So I can't damage it directly, I just need to open their mouths and make sure the spike balls fall right into them. And I do know when they'll open it, because the one on the left or right will stomp. When it's going to do it. And each of them has a different set of attacks. It seems like they alternate which amount is going to open first. First yellow, then pink, then yellow, etc. Well, that's a unique boss fight. We don't see many of the uh, boss fights where we have to use the enemy's attack against them in order to win. Especially when there are just two of them. There we go. These twin whatever have been defeated. Yeah, I know that the, the, the Skipper 1995 is more of a developer just like I am. So some of the spite art is a bit spotty. Hopefully that will be fixed in a future update. Alright, let's go to Fortress 2. And I don't want to waste up, and I want to use up my some of my items, so I'm going to be using double damage. So now we see in the top right, our damage meter has gone from 1 to 2. Otherwise, you know, the life bar and score on the top left are necessary, of course. But the damage meter most of the time stays constant, so I don't really see a reason to actually keep it on screen all the time. It's not like there's status ailments in this game or status buffs which increase your damage in stage. Because even then... The only time you can really increase your damage is, well, by by buying an item in the shop. That's the only way you can really upgrade it from what I see, or temporarily do it. So really, it would be better to keep the damage meter on the main menu, because there's enough space over here. I mean, right in the middle of this exit and this item, we could probably put a damage meter there. Otherwise, it's just wasting sp it taking up space in the top right, and, something and it doesn't really change. If it was much more dynamic, like it was changing throughout the stage, or you could buff it, I would agree that it should be on the top right, but as it stands right now, it's not necessary. Only the life bar and score are really necessary to keep on screen at, at once. And of course, following the tradition in many other Mega Man games, apparently, y the Y2 stage, or SR Fortress Stage 2, is a water stage. I don't know how that became convention, but apparently it is. So I need to roll this uh, snowball underwater while, while not jumping too high. Well, I can jump really high, and this is one of the places where that meter is really helpful. Oh goody, now we have temporary uh, ropes now. I'm gonna wait for that, whatever it is, to dissipate. I do wish we had it. I hope in the end of the game we'll have a bestiary showing what are all the names of the enemies. As these aren't based off of other Mega Man, most of them are not really directly based off of Mega Man enemies. Well, some of their styles or shot patterns are similar, but they're not really similar in design, specifically physical or appearance. So I would like a bestiary at the end or a credits roll showing what each enemy types are actually called. Yeah, I thought I was going to damage boost, but apparently it's not really necessary yet. Oh hey, these from the f uh, these chain links from the fourth stage. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa, that's bad. Yeah, that was my fault. I tried holding left, but uh, my invulnerability period ran out during the pause screen. Oh well, there goes my double damage. I didn't reuse it much, so it's not too bad. I can always re-earn it and purchase it from the shop. I th I'll keep one at the handy for the ro uh, for the rematch stage, if there is a rematch stage, that is. And the background kind of reminds me of Dynamos. Yeah, that. 
Oh boy, I need to hurry this. Is it just me, or does that background element remind me of Dynamo Man's stage from Mega Man Base? Specifically an 8-bit version. It looks totally like a generator. It may be just me, though. Oh hey, the bunny enemies. We haven't seen them for a while. And there we regain all of our items. Or gems. Oh, now we have the teleporter maze. Yeah, that was my fault. I should have held left, but I was rushing because the light was going out. I expect to see a lot of deaths in these parts because the SR Fortress stages are really amping up the difficulty. Let's do this the correct way now. Hold left. Make sure not to go under, uh, go into the teleporter out, out, because it's instant death. Yeah, really amping up the difficulty and chance for failure. Let's see, I need to get into that... Okay, I need to get into that teleporter right at the right, right, at the right time so I don't fall. What happened? Oh, I didn't see those spikes there. They, they were kind of camouflaged with the background. Or with the rest of the tile set. Well, let's try this again then. I was totally expecting it to get up much harder, and, well, there you have it. Thankfully, I have infinite lives, so I don't need to worry about having to reset the stage again. So that's one other point for the developer. I gotta be a lot more cautious so I can get through these stages alive. Well, at least there was a checkpoint here. Hmm, I wonder... Okay, that's what I need to do. Quite a long jump, but at least we're underwater. Oh boy. I wonder what would happen if I jumped too high. Too high. Would I just die? Or would I just hit the bottom part of the screen and just... ...fall into instant death pit? Or instant death ceiling? That would be kind of odd. Oh. Okay, I was expecting this to happen eventually. I need to go time is just right, so... Oh, that was a bit too close for comfort there. Well, we exited this second... Um, wait a minute. Um, the tile set is a little bit off because the water is going a bit into the wall for some reason. Hopefully that will be fixed in a future update, because it seems a little bit offset. Anyways, we have this... Okay, this is from the marine base as well, where the water's going up and down. At least I think it's from the marine base. It reminds me of Centaur Man's gimmick from that stage. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about, the water... Uh, the level of water going up and down from the ceiling. That totally reminds me of the gimmick from Centaur Man's stage. It's almost exactly the same gimmick, actually. Or it is the same gimmick. But it's being reapplied in another context. I'm being a lot more cautious here just to make sure there aren't any spikes camouflaged with the ceiling or something. Or camouflaged with the floor. Okay, more gravity. So let's see what, what what horrors we need to go through now. Okay, now we have these. Okay, that bounced me right above. Neat. Of course, now we have the water rushing in from the bottom, and we need to basically just make these long jumps in order to survive, in order to make these gaps. Once again, I can't stress this enough. Thank you, the Skipper 1995, for actually having for showing where the pits are with black voids. So on the top, you can see those 
well, the ceiling is a black void, so it's instant dead. Thankfully, I can't hit the spikes from the other side, too. Yeah, that'll kill me if I make it. Oh, uh, whoa. Oh boy. Some of these jumps are going to be a little bit hectic to do, especially because of how the water is rushing up and down, and that's going to throw off my jump height. Well, I made it. I thought I was going to die at least once or twice there. And we have the Skull Bubbles now. Alright, time to ride this. Let's see where it takes us. Ah. Uh, yeah, I got hit and I couldn't jump out of it. As I said in the pre two, par uh, two parts ago, I do wish there was an upgrade in this game that made it so that you wouldn't actually be knocked back at all. Instead, you would just basically take damage, but you would still be able to move around. Ah, uh, I thought I made the jump, but apparently not. As if I had an absolutely zero knockback upgrade, I'd be absolutely be able to continue control of my character. Instead of here, where I get knocked upwards and I can't continue onwards. And in that case, I can't really jump between platforms and then I just die. So something that makes it so you immediately go into invulnerability frames, but you never lose control of your character when taking damage. That would be an awesome upgrade. Ooh, that was a bit too close, due to timing reasons. Oh, and I see that polar bear over there. Yeah, the side spikes are the main problems with navigating this. If they didn't have it, I wouldn't be have so many problems with it, but that combined with the snowman, yeah, that's where problems start to come along. And I could actually see this, uh, the, the spike wheels on the other side of the screen, and I was able to activate it for some reason. But one thing's for certain throughout all this and all my deaths, difficulty is raising up a lot, it's increasing a lot. As you can see with all the deaths in the different areas and the different configurations of challenges and enemies and a lot more dangerous can, uh, is patterns. And sit that pit over here. Now we have the balloons over these bubbles. I mean these bubbles over spike pits and everything. Okay, this is probably gonna be a flip. I was expecting it. Let's just see how far it goes. Yep. I expected that too. And yeah, touching the spikes even when a bubble is instant dead as well. Alright, we made it to the boss door, or boss corridor. Let's see how difficult this boss is. Oh, this this kind of reminds me of CW uh, Zero P from Mega Man 1, except it's bouncing all over the screen. Um, okay, I have to keep shooting until its bubble decreases. Oh, and I can't... Okay, I have to jump over these, too. Um... No, I can't jump over them, they're too small. I mean, the gap is too wide for me to cross. Technically, it seems that these special checkpoints just before the boss restore all of my gems, so I'm not, I have nothing to worry. If I die too much. So I need to pop its bottle, the bubble as quickly as possible. And keep shooting it. Okay, it takes 1 HP damage for a shot as well. If there's only a way I could destroy the spikes, that would make it so much easier. Yeah, it's just learning how to dodge those bubbles is going to be the challenging part of this boss fight. I think I can manipulate where the spikes go around, but if they do go up, I can't really cross them unless I want to damage tank.
Yeah, it's the first two jumps in the battle where it actually makes those jumps. Or where it spawns those spikes. Okay, I got the hang of it, I think. There we go, it's much easier once you get used to the pattern of when it creates those spikes and how it throws those bubbles. Really, the, the boss fight was much easier than the stage preceding it. You saw how many times I died, at least half a dozen times. Really, that's this is a pattern I've been seeing throughout this game, where the boss fights are noticeably easier than the stages preceding them. This is especially apparent with the third set of Magical Mystery stages. Well then, in this part I completed Essor Fortress Stage 1 and 2. In the next part, I'll be going to Essor Fortress Stage... Well, the final Essor Fortress Stage, the Tower. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day. Toodles!